Okay, I have the um, the clock and the program counter on a PCB board, and I'm testing out the uh, through the uh, program counter manually. The blue line here is going to represent the program counter, and the yellow line I have that hooked up will be the 555 clock. Now the 555 clock generates a single, I think, at two kilohertz at about 75% duty cycle, and the clock is about 50% uh, duty cycle. So, I have this little test board I made here where I can do the clear operation, I can do the step with this, and then I can do the uh, auto or manual with this button here. So let me show you on the oscilloscope, you're going to be looking at the program counter really slow. It's in the manual mode. I'm clicking the button as you can see. You can zoom in here a little bit. So this is our clock pulse. Counting in binary. Now that last one's not clearing out all the time. I got some problems with some debouncing and I have some problems when I have it hooked up to the oscilloscope with the ground wires. But when the oscilloscope is now hooked up, it works fine. So well, that's how you step through it. The auto manual switch is here. So now the clock is running at full speed. Single line here. There we go. So we got about a one kilohertz single. Let's see what our 555. Okay, so the 555 is about two two kilohertz and a 75% duty cycle. Okay, so I'm on output three of the 555 timer. I'm going to take some measurements here. I want to see the frequency and I want to see the duty cycle. Okay, so as you see, just like the book says, 75% duty cycle, and we've got a uh, frequency of about 2 kilohertz. That's on the 555. So, if you don't know what this is, duty cycle, uh, this, this is how, how much time see this line here how much time it's on as opposed to off so 75% of this is on 25% of it is off that's duty cycle the, the 505 timer is faster than the program counter because the program counter is dividing down the clock to a more stable square wave so if I were to look at the uh, program counter two single side by side so let me just stop this thing so you can see the clock is faster than the program counter and the program counter is uh, running at 50% duty cycle, where the clock is running at 75% duty cycle. So the off time and the on time are the same on the program counter. When I built this thing, I had to watch. The schematics didn't call for any kind of resistors or capacitors uh, for debouncing the switch. I have all kinds of problems in uh, debouncing the switch when running it in manual mode. So there's a little circuit of a script debouncer. You can try to add that into the switch lines. Throw in a couple of resistors there, pulling, I think pin, uh, what is it, uh, 9 and 13, I believe, too high. And that seemed to debounce it. I don't have the capacitor in there, and it's only 1K resistors. May, it, you know, might be better with the 210K uh, voltage divider method with the capacitor, which is in this circuit here. Anyway, that I'd share that with you. So I purchased this little uh, logic tester unit from uh, Jamico. Uh, it's a pretty neat little device. It's lightweight. There's no batteries in it. You plug in the positive and negative to your uh, circuit here, and you don't want to go exceed 20 volts. But you have a high, low light that comes on and a pulse line. So this is really neat to test this stuff out really quickly. So let me give you an example of this. Okay, so we got a 555 timer running here, right? So let's go to number three. You can see the pulse. That's working. Okay, well, let's see. The power is on uh, pin four and the power is on pin eight. That's correct. Well, let's see if the ground is correct. The ground is showing low. So there's different sounds depending on the low and high. And there's even different sounds on... Uh, on the amount of uh, current or voltage on the line. And there's also this little memory uh, 
a pulse playback, which I think if you, it can record a sequence of uh, highs and lows, then play it back. I haven't tried that yet. But let's test out all these other ones here. Let's see if we got a good ground in every one of them. We do. What's this? Oh, that's high because the chip's on the other way around, so the ground's that way. Okay, let's see. Well, ground, positive. Um, how about uh, what's happening here? Oh, look at that. Right between the two resistors and the 555, I think pin 7 is pulsing out there. So this is a pretty neat little device here.